and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. everyone. Welcome to the Idea Space podcast, a place for creating space for you to move toward your goals and impress yourself. I'm Jen Liddy, and this week I'm back in Syracuse, New York, after visiting my family in Charlotte, North Carolina. Coming back north is both a wonderful thing because I love a good routine and I love my house, and it's also hard because I personally struggle with the gray, snowy, cold weather of central New York. I have some support strategies in place, and I'll talk about those in the future, but man, coming back to the gray is tough. So I'm happy to be with you here today, wherever you are. And today I'm sharing some strategies to get you through the moments where you feel burned out and overwhelmed or paralyzed. Do you remember last week I told you the story of Laura's burnout with her sister? She was feeling really bullied by her sister and really stuck in an old pattern. And I taught you a few strategies to help you undo old patterns and stories. I taught you about living in your worst case scenario and how to stop indulging the thoughts and behaviors that come along with that. Basically, we're talking about retraining your brain to move you closer to your goals, to nurture yourself as you move forward to get what you want. And I also promised some strategies on how to retrain others. But before we get there, I think that you should know the story of my personal burnout. So let's go there for a few minutes. I was working probably anywhere from 60 to 70 hours a week in my business. At the time, I was one of three partners working in a fitness business. It was not a franchise. We were making up the rules as we went along. Now, that was both a blessing and a disguise because we didn't have somebody else's rules to live by, but we always felt like we were kind of clueless about what we were actually supposed to do. That's because we're not business folks. We One was a brilliant fitness trainer, and she was in charge of all the front of the house fitness stuff. One was a brilliant creative problem solver, and she was in charge of all of the back of the house stuff, and I was running the operations, and I will tell you, I definitely did not feel brilliant. What I felt was hopeless. We weren't making enough money to pay all three owners. Our bills were paid and our payroll was paid, but I was not getting paid. Only one of the three owners was, we just made enough for only one of the three owners to get paid. That's what we agreed to. And that's, that's where it was. I was definitely learning on the job. We all were, we were all doing the best we could. To keep up, I told myself I had to keep churning forward and giving more. It's that overgiving thing I talked about last week. But why? Well, the story I told myself was that, damn it, that's what was expected of me. And I had nothing left to give by probably by three years in. I was really crispy. I was irritated all the time, but mostly I was terrified because I could not see my way out of what I considered to be a hopeless situation. Nothing had really changed, actually. I had always worked hard in the business, except now that work felt really grindy and crunchy, and I realized I was burned out. But except for my, the problem was my role was that everybody still needed me. I was the operations person, and so everyone expected me to show up and provide, because of course they did. I was, you know, that was my role. There was nothing wrong with what they expected. It was that it was the problem was what I was showing up with. And here's why it felt hopeless. I was allowing everyone else's behavior and expectations to be in control of my happiness. 
I kept waiting for everyone to see how burned out I was. I kept waiting for them to notice that I couldn't handle it anymore. And I kept waiting for them to need me less, to ask less of me and to show up more for themselves. And maybe that resonates with you because maybe there are people that you're waiting to see when they're going to figure out that you have nothing left to give. And I want you to know that this is just silly of ourselves because people expect what we train them to expect. And here's what I want you to know about my business at that time. I had trained my employees, my staff, my partners, and the clients to expect that I would show up, perform at 110%, and kick some major ass. If I wanted different behaviors from them, then I had to reestablish their expectations of me. And so here's the news that you probably don't want to hear. This meant I couldn't expect them to change. I had to change. Yes, you are burned out because you've trained everyone in your life to expect you to show up, to expect you to oblige, to expect you to overgive, to expect you to overprovide and to kick ass while doing it. So the good news, bravo, you've noticed you are burned out you've noticed there's something you don't want to put up with anymore. And here's some bad news. You cannot expect others to change or notice or do the work. If you want long-lasting changes, changes can happen and they begin with you. And I'm warning you, it's uncomfortable. Your people will not like it. They will test you. And you will want to indulge at this point. You'll want to hit the easy button, but you have to keep going on the path that feels hard if you want things to be different, if you want to get to your goal. I want you to remember that you've done harder stuff than this before. You can handle this and you can stay strong. Here's how. Start with step one show up for yourself. That means notice that you're burned out and take a frigging breath. What does burnout feel like to you? Now, it might be different for everybody out there. Does it mean that you're not sleeping? Does it mean you're eating like crap? Does it mean you're being snappy and irritable? Does it mean that when you get up in the morning, the first thing you think about is when you can go back to bed? Maybe you've already done step one and that's cool. So you can just move right on to step two. Step two is take action, which sometimes means inaction. What? Okay, here's an example. Maybe your sister asks you to babysit every Friday night and you do it because you've got nothing else going on. Maybe that's why you've done it for three years now, but you've noticed that you're so tired on Friday. You feel like a piece of luggage and you're crawling over the finish line. You're tired of being available and you want a damn night to Netflix and chill by yourself. So good news. You've done step one. Now step two requires action. And all you do is you say, I can't sit this week. Now, she's probably either going to be pissed or shocked or surprised or disappointed. And when she asks for a reason, you don't have to give one. But if you do give one, just tell the truth. Please don't make up a huge story. Be honest, clear, and without blame and without apology. Here are some scripts to practice. Hey, wanted to give you a heads up that I'm not available this Friday. I just need a night to myself. I'm sure you understand. Did you notice there? There was no apology. It was clear. It was honest and it was without blame. It was a very clear boundary. Another script. I can't sit this Friday. I've realized I'm a piece of luggage on Fridays and I need to recharge. I'll let you know which Fridays I can do next month. And then you do that if it feels right. Another script. I'm taking this Friday off. I'm giving myself the gift of a bath, some wine, and a movie alone this week. I will definitely see you next week, though. Thanks for understanding. That's it. No apologies. No long stories or excuses. No, if you really need me, call me. This is just a practice. What could it be for you? It might be something like, hey, dad, I know we do pizza night on Fridays, but this week I just need to keep the kids home and recharge. 
We'll see you next week. Notice that there is no asking, okay? There is no looking for approval. You don't need approval. You're a grown ass woman. Asking for approval is how you got here in the first place. So here's the pro tip to step two. Start with something really low risk, just dip a toe. Don't do this in every area of your life at once because you'll be overwhelmed. Step three, I want you to know that your people will not like the new you. Some will respect it. Some will be thrilled that you're catching your breath. I'm personally over here cheering you on, respecting you so much for doing this hard work. But others will try to guilt you, challenge you, and downright bully you. And this is your big moment to shine and create some confidence. Because what you're about to do is hard. Here's what I mean. Your sister might be mad at you for not babysitting. And that's okay. People can be mad. Why should you be fried and burned out to keep somebody else from feeling uncomfortable? Being mad will not kill that person. You didn't do anything wrong. You're just retraining them. Also, they might yell. You don't have to listen to that. You can say, sounds like you're upset. Let's talk next week. But you do not have to listen to somebody yelling at you. Also, it's hard because somebody might try to make you feel guilty. But they can't make you feel guilty. Only you can make you feel guilty. Feeling guilty is a choice. Try not to be upset that they're making you feel guilty. They're just in retraining. I want you to think of them like a child or a pet. Yes, I know it sounds horrible, but I want you to think of your people like a small child or a dog. And it seems harsh, but this mental trick really resonates with my clients. Our people will take what they can until we create a limit for them. They're not doing it to be mean or to be a-holes. I mean, some probably are, but most are just going off of the boundaries that you've already set up. Even the adults, because that's what we humans do. We're not bad. We just don't know that something is a problem for you until you tell us it is. And I could go on for days about this topic, but this podcast is getting too long and I like to keep it short because I know you're busy. So let me wrap up. Notice where you're overgiving. Take a breath. I had to do that in my first business and it took me a long time because I would take baby steps. I also couldn't do it by myself because I needed somebody to see things for me that I couldn't see for myself. One, notice where you're overgiving. Two, decide you're not going to take that shit anymore or you're not going to do that shit anymore. And three, stand your ground and be uncomfortable. You will not die from being uncomfortable. For you addicted obligers and overgivers, you've got to take baby steps, my friends. Try this in one area with one step. And I really want to know how it's going because you might have questions or a particularly difficult situation. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you're going to learn more and actually see this in practice. I'm at Jen Liddy Coach on both Facebook and Instagram, and I'm very active there. If you post me a question or shoot me a DM, I will most definitely get back to you. And let's be honest, sometimes you need somebody to stand next to you and give you permission or help you with a script. That's my job and I love doing it. So I've got openings in my group coaching program, The Idea Space, for coaching clients who really want to make changes in their lives. We talk about this stuff and how it helps you move toward your goals. And you can get more information at jenliddy.com. I'd love to chat so you don't have to do this alone. But I know that you can do this because you can do hard things. I don't want you to forget that. I'll see you next week. And next week is December. Holy crap. I'll see you then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Bye.